Hi, Katie. Thank you for joining us for uh, the DIPG Collaborative. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about your grant today, if we can. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, with that in mind, I'll throw it over to Eleni to uh, go ahead and take the next step. Hi, Eleni. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Good, you? <laughs> very well, very well. Um, well, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the 27 foundations of the DIPG DMG Collaborative. And with that, uh, we would like to present you with a cheque for $232,932 US dollars for your research in enhancing the recruitment of tumour infiltrating infocytes to improve responses to DI DMG therapies. Thank you, Eleni. That's great news. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. With that, I will hand over to Kim Walk from the Robert Connor Dawes Foundation. Hi there, Matt. How are you going? Hi, Kim. Good. I'm a bit tired, but I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah, we heard that you were around and about. Look, a, a fantastic effort. Congratulations. And we're very proud um, on behalf of the Collaborate to not only support this grant, um, but others that you have been awarded in the past and indeed some other work that you're also doing at the Hunter um, Medical Institute. And on behalf of Robert Connor Dawes, we are just delighted um, that you continue in this area. We think your work is outstanding and particularly this one in the immuno or immunology immuno sort of therapy area. I think it's just fantastic. So Please keep fighting the good fight and we are watching your research very keenly and eagerly. So with Thanks, that, Kim. I'd like, you're welcome. With that, I'd and like Liz. to, yes, I, I will let Liz know. She's, she's aware of it. She's really happy that we were able to be part of this team to congratulate you. So with that, I'd like to pass over now to Dr. Hamza Anwar um, of the Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. Thank you for that, Kim. Uh, hi, Dr. Dunn. Firstly, I just want to say on behalf of Cure Brain Cancer Foundation, congratulations. Um, we here at the foundation, we are, you know, our, our overall mission is to improve the survival and quality of life. And to do that, we need to be funding novel and innovative research. And your research here definitely fits to that category. So again, congratulations and thank you. And um, we want to just keep supporting you. We want to keep seeing how you're able to improve on this in the future and everything. So um, I, I just just real quickly, I did take over of, uh, from Stephanie recently. She had, she has left the foundation, so um, you'll be seeing me a lot more often these days. Um, but yeah, we're looking very forward to uh, how your research progresses over the next uh, next few periods. And so, with that in mind, I'd like to pass it over to Jesse of the Cure Starts Now. Thanks, Hamza, and pass on my regards to Stephanie. She's been a great supporter as well. Hi, Doctor Dunn. Uh, I just Hi, want to let you know. Uh, it, it really does mean a lot to all the families affected by DMG and DIPG to see the research progressing towards a cure. Um, since my daughter, uh, Maddie, she passed in 2015 from DIPG and uh, it's, you know, we're just grateful to see the promising research underway uh, to, to help kids going forward. Uh, and we appreciate the good work that you and your team are doing. Thanks, Jesse. Um, obviously, tragic circumstances that we meet. Uh, shared tragedies, um, but I appreciate the support and the willingness to continue to fight the good fight uh, and to support teams like mine and, and other ex ex excellent teams from around the world doing novel things um, to try and beat this monster. Yeah, just like you said, it's really the collaboration and working together where that's really going to make the difference. And so I'm really glad to see that both on the supporting side and then also, you know, among the researchers as well. Now, on, on that note, um, maybe you could just give us a quick understanding of what this specific research is, uh, like what it means for DI, for DMG and beyond. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Thanks for the great opportunity. This is my favorite part to talk science. And I'll do it uh, as simply as I can. Um, one of the things that makes DIPG such a devastating disease is that where the tumour grows within the brainstem and, and also in the thalamus for DMG patients um, is that the, the DIPG send out signals to the whole body to turn the immune system off. So we know that the brainstem is right in the midline of the body and all of the critical nerves traverse the brainstem that control the rest of the body 
absolutely everything we do, breathing, respiration, movement, we all know the symptoms that our kids start to show when the tumour starts to grow in that region. But what we don't know about is how the tumour regulates the immune system. And, and what we've discovered over the last four years is that not only does the signals that control movement and swallowing and breathing get disrupted, but also how the brain controls the immune system, the neuroimmuno axis. Um, and because the, one of the drugs that we've been working on for a long time that we've got into a phase two clinical trial called onc 201 is a dopamine D2 antagonist. So you can understand that in the brain, Dopamine is a um, signaling, signaling molecule that communicates between uh, neurons, but it doesn't just happen between neurons. It also happens in neurons in the peripheral body that go traverse the central nervous system, and then they talk to the immune system. And we discovered that uh, T cells, which are the body's natural cancer fighting cells, are covered in dopamine receptors. Why? Why are they covered in dopamine receptors? Because they talk to the immune system. So when you have a tumour growing in the brainstem and it's disrupting all the signals that are getting traversed, you're also disrupting dopamine signalling. And as a consequence, the T-cells, which are meant to fight the cancer or fight infection, are getting trapped within the organs where they develop and they mature and they don't release from the bone marrow or the spleen or the thymus. And they just, what we call, get sequestered there. And so one of the things that we've been able to show in animal models and in the lab is that when we use onc 201 in the animals, we started to see some T cells getting out of the immune uh, organs, starting to circulate. And we even found them in the brain stem of tumors that we put into mice in um, animal models that had an immune system, functional immune system. So we thought, wow, this is super incredible. If we can train those T cells to recognize the tumor now, it's all well and good that they're getting there, but unless they can recognize the tumor and start to kill them, then, um, then it's pointless. It doesn't really mean anything. And so over the last, I suppose, well, when Josie was diagnosed in 2018, a trial had just started to test an immuno-oncology drug um, called nivolumab, uh, which, uh, which binds to the T cells and helps the T cells to kill the tumour. And it didn't work. It, it Actually, patients did worse. They got more brain inflammation, um, which is a consequence of immunotherapies. But what we didn't have at the time is that we hadn't trained the immune system to recognise the tumour and we hadn't caused the, the T cells to be released from the um, from the organs where they develop in the peripheral. So in this, in this grant, we are um, characterizing the mechanisms that keep the T cells in the bone marrow so that we can then um, make them come out more. And it might not necessarily just be onc one that can do it because there are other drugs that are FDA approved already that disrupt dopamine signaling. And that's used for drug diseases like epilepsy, um, uh, if some psycho um, neuronal disorders as well. So there's FDA approved drugs. So in this grant, We've got this cool animal model that we've um, been given by a great colleague in Michigan, Carl Koshman, um, who developed DIPG-like cells that can go into animals that have a functioning immune system. We'll test these drugs that modulate dopamine receptor, receptor antagonism in the peripheral, and we'll measure the T cells. And at the same time, the T cells that get into the brain stem, into the tumors, we're going to sequence them and identify what the crosstalk is between the T cells and, and there's also myeloid cells, which are another type of blood cells there, and the DIPGs and find out what, what, what communications are going back and forth to stop them from now eating the tumour. In some patients on compassionate access that we've got given that we've given on 201 and, and Paxalicid, which is our clinical trial called PNOC022, we've had absolutely remarkable tumour regression. In those patients, some observations. One, um, the treatment started within a window of about eight weeks following the completion of radiotherapy. Although the tumour had started to grow back again after that time, the combinations of drugs led to a dramatic tumour re regression. Now, these are remarkable results, and this patient continues to do really well 20 months after diagnosis. She's been on Pax and Onc for 64 weeks. This is, these numbers are amazing for DIPG. The other observation is she was off dexamethasone and dexamethasone is this terrible um, corticosteroid drug that blows up the immune system, basically stops the immune system from, from functioning. And we think for the kids that have a dramatic response to the drug, one, they're not on dex um, and the kids that don't do so well are almost always on dex. And, and there could be some correlatives, you know, worse disease. There's, there's some artifacts there um, that we have to investigate, but we really think that if we can keep kids off dex, 
we can give these um, therapies that increase the immune cells from, from uh, being sequestered within the bone marrow and, and start to circulate and find their way to the, the DIPG. And if we can then enhance that um, interaction between the T cells that make it to the tumor uh, and the tumor, then we're gonna get a dramatic tumor response, a sustained, prolonged, uh, result that you know the, the thing that we're all craving desperately after so thank you guys this is going to go a, a long way to help us do the really expensive single cell sequencing that we have to do of the cells that make it to the bone marrow um, get us to do some animal models to use other dopamine receptor antagonists to prove that it's a dopamine receptor mediated mechanism and then once we have those two pieces of the puzzle we'll then employ uh, the novel immune therapy in the animal models and then you know, that gives us great impetus to include that as a natural next arm of our already established international adaptive clinical trial, right? It's open at 32 hospitals around the world. So it means that the path from identification of potential therapies to translation is in a feasible window. And that's what we all want. We want effective therapies in kids and we want to test them under clinical trial conditions um, so we can get real answers as quickly as we can. And not only that, it gives kids multiple options when they fail other other exciting ideas and unfortunately with this monster we haven't had any success in long-term outcome yet so we have to be realistic and say okay well we've got a good clinical trial but when the patients succumb what ha what what happens next and so we're really trying to give families uh, clinical teams uh, and children as many options as possible to beat this well we appreciate your enthusiasm and the uh, discussion of your grant as well um obviously it shows through and uh, I concur, you know, the, it is about you know, what's next, um, also on the research front as well. And I know we've had many conversations about, you know, that how this all comes together and how all these trials tie together and they teach us something so that we keep stepping one step closer to the cure each and every day. So yeah. with that, um, obviously, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Lovely to see you all today.